10 effects that are built into DaVinci Resolve Studio that I think are incredibly useful and not talked about often enough. All right, so this first one is called Blanking Fill. I think we've all had a project where we, we have a still image or maybe a vertical video inside of a horizontal one, basically something where we're not filling the entire screen. Now, normally what I would do in the past is I would duplicate the image, I would select the background one, I would make it, you know, bigger, and then we go over to the effects panel, and we go to open effects here, drop down a lens blur, and then actually usually what I would do is raise this all up one more. Actually, I'd go over here to generators, I would grab a colored still background here, and so that way I can blur the background and go back to video capacity and boom that gives us something like that right and i used to think that was easy well it turns out there's a much easier way simply just take the image as you have it go over to effects i've favorited it over here blanking fill you can search and it's instantaneously going to do the same thing while still giving you creative control so i can go up here to my uh, source for some reason it crops it uh, so I don't like that. So I always have to remember to uncrop it. And then it it keeps the background scaled properly. And since I have it scaled down a bit more for my main, we can see black borders. So I'm going to say manual and I can just go ahead and expand this however much I want. I can still change the blur of the background and I can even fade it. I just got to change this to black. So it fades a bit darker. And now we do the same thing. But one, it was way faster. And two, we still just have one layered clip here. And it's something that we can instantaneously just copy this attribute and paste it to a hundred other images rather than having to manually uh, do that to rather than having to have a bunch of layers and and stacking everything on top of each other and you know, dealing with that whole mess. So blanking fill is awesome. D flicker, I actually made a whole dedicated video on it, but here's the gist. Obviously we have a clip here that is flickering. I can go in here, drag D flicker right on top of it. It opens up uh, in here. And the only thing that you really want to change is from time-lapse, which is for some reason the default to fluorescent lighting. This way you don't get weird motion blur effects, but you can adjust your image as needed. And now uh, that's pretty much taken away. So the flicker is incredibly useful. All right, so next up we have kind of a bunch of effects, but it's a whole group of them under the same thing. You can find it on the color page or the edit page, and that's under Resolve FX Light. Here we have some of my favorite effects like Aperture Diffraction. If you really want to add some style uh, to it, then you can drag this on top and you can instantly see kind of what it does. I like taking the aperture size and messing it with that. That is my favorite one. I usually bring it back. It adds a crazy amount of uh, nice bloom to your image, obviously, because I'm doing the uh, frame rate. This is a very processor intensive one, so it's destroying my computer right now. So I do like that one. Uh, if you want something slightly, potentially more subtle even, you can do glow, uh, you can do halation. Everything in this kind of group is really fun to play with. And halation, glow, and aperture diffraction are ones that really feel like they're interacting with your image. Like, like if I just drag on lens flare, for example, and hit play, nothing moves, right? I have to go in, I have to like track this, I have to really kind of work to blend it into my image. But halation, aperture, diffraction, and all that stuff, like it feels like it just takes the highlights and, and the roll off of the image and really just instantly kind of works. <laughs> so for... Uh, those one click button pushers to add a little bit of style. I really like uh, Resolve Effects Light. And actually, right below that, you have Effects Refine. For example, if you do face refinement here, I can go in, I can hit Analyze. And I really like this because you can see in real time it actually analyzing a face and, uh, and tracking every part of the face structure, even though this is pretty complex because it's from the side, not even in the front and automatically it's grabbed the eyes, the jaw, the lips, and everything. And so if I turn off the overlay here and go back to, say, this section where we can see more of her, and we can see I can just brighten up, maybe sharpen it. I light, takes a little bags away. I can go into the lips, and maybe I want to make those more saturated, even more red. And obviously you can go pretty 
unrealistic with it. But yeah, so beauty can go pretty crazy with it. But if I turn this on and off, you can see it's just nice little, nice little enhancements if that's uh, the style you're going for. So FX Beauty, pretty sweet. Under the same section, you have the fancy new relight section, right? And this is like the big new thing that you can uh, relight and do all that stuff. And if you guys want to see a whole dedicated video on this feature, let me know in the comments below. Uh, it's not perfect. It can definitely look pretty fake if you don't use it right. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard to show off in the matter of seconds here. But if you guys want to see that, leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll make a dedicated relight video. Again, most of these effects you can find both on the color page as well as the uh, edit page. Similar to kind of a vignette style, one thing that I do like is a tilt shift blur. Uh, this is just adds a little bit of style, especially if it's something that you, you know, maybe everything is too in focus for your liking and you want to create a little bit more tunnel vision. Don't go like crazy with it. Um, but you can adjust the blur strength. Obviously, we want to adjust this to where you know, her eyes, probably I'm going to like angle this. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put the blur like crazy so I can actually see where my line is. And then once you have your selection, kind of dial it back. But again, if you just want to say draw focus to like her eyes and make the hair less in focus in the earring and shirt and stuff, it just, it's adds a little bit of pop. These are the things that you, you do gently but overall they can enhance the image, which I really like. Next up we have camera shake. So for most of the shoot, I was handheld. This is all very natural like camera shake. Uh, but then we had a scene where I shot it on sticks, but let's say I wanted to make them match a little bit more. We can go over here to camera shake, drag this on top, open up our effects here. And of course by default, it doesn't look crazy, but that's definitely way too shaky. And so you can simply just dial things back. I really love how most of Resolve's effects, you have some pretty crazy uh, advanced dialing in tools that you can. But normally at the top, you have some very simple ones that if you don't want to mess with things too much, even something like this, like camera's moving a bit, but it doesn't stand out ever so slightly, right? It's a little too repetitive. So I probably would dial it a little bit more. Here we go, like randomness. Yeah, I, I would tweak the, like the randomness things because it, it feels a little too like in the same pattern of motion. But it definitely adds a little something compared to if I turn it off. It's totally static, totally boring. Turn on. It's just got a little something. I'd probably zoom it in and cut it in a bit tighter. But yeah, camera shake is sweet. All right, let's bring in another shot here. Uh, and this one, similar to kind of the tilt shift, let me use the lens blur again. But this one, I'm actually going to go to the color page because I actually want to mask it a little bit. I'm going to create a window, and I don't exactly know where yet. I'm going to treat it like a vignette. But at the very top under blur, I'm just going to do lens blur. And I'm just going to invert this. And it's just a little something. Again, just a little, little taste we can see on his boot. It just takes a little bit of that uh, sharpness away, but while still looking pretty much realistic. So you can dial that in. So remember, you, while you definitely want to get stuff like blur and focus right in camera, there are times where you just want to add a little bit of sharpening and a little bit of unsharpening. All right, here's one that I personally will never use, but I want to point out because I know some people use them and that is watermark. So if I drag this on top, let me delete the camera shake we did earlier. Uh, automatically, we can see the watermark uh, shown up here. Now you can go as simple as replacing this watermark with whatever name you want. So want it here. And again, you can, it's like any other text, you can make it a different color. You can change the sizing, opacity. Uh, but what you can also do is if you have a logo that you want to use, so like I put my logo in here, add it to a bin. It won't work if you like just drag it from Finder, but you simply just take it from your bin, drag logo here under clip name, and then ch hit uh, choose use logo. I don't know why I blanked on that. And then usually just click around, kind of glitches out, but you can see the same thing here. You can adjust the size, you can angle it if you want to. Now you have uh, a built-in watermark. I'm not a fan of watermarks, but if you are, there you go.
And finally, this one's kind of unique, uh, but it's called Color Palette. And I thought this one was cool. If you're trying to create branding or design and you really like how a scene is lit and how you have it color graded, you can go in here and just drop this color palette. And then you could export a screenshot and take it in something like Photoshop, grab the hex numbers of all these different things. And, and it can kind of help you build a color palette for your scene. And so if this was like a test scene or something, and I really liked the look and the LUT and the grade, then we could take that to other scenes and be like, hey, let's make sure these colors are really represented in this scene and the way we shoot it, the way we light it, the way we dress, all that good stuff. So while you won't leave this really on for a final image most of the time, I think it's a really cool effect and tool to have that personally I've never really seen people talk about. So let me know what you guys think of this list uh, in the comments below. And if you have a favorite effects I didn't mention, please let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in next video.